The Lord is my shepherd. He restores my soul. Psalm 23, 1 and 3. Hello, this is Brandon Bathour, a spiritual growth pastor at Saddleback Church. Welcome to The Well, a guided time with God. This is the opportunity, the call, to spend the next few minutes with your shepherd, hearing from him, learning from him, and finding rest for your soul. To start, get comfortable. Feel free to close your eyes and begin by simply being quiet before him. Let the buzz of all your thoughts and worry clear away. The Lord is my shepherd. He restores my soul. Psalm 23, 1 and 3. Restores my soul. Few words can be as refreshing as these. It is time to let the shepherd, the great carpenter, the skilled handworker, restore and refresh your soul. Have you ever seen something truly restored, brought back to its intended purpose and beauty? It is quite the process. Imagine a wooden chest, originally built to carry treasured memories and precious belongings. Sitting in dust and darkness, it needs attention. Over time, it has grown tired, scarred, and dilapidated. The wood is chipped, the colors are dulled, the hinges rusty. But now, the lights are on, and the great carpenter, with great love, has come to do his work to restore. Think of your soul, your life, as this wooden box, in need of the touch of the restorer's hands. Pause for a moment right now and invite God to restore and refresh you today. The first thing the restorer does is to gather his tools and begin taking apart all the pieces. He blows away the dust, clears the cobwebs, separates the lid, takes off the hinges, pulls off the rusty handles and knobs. He disassembles it all. Then he lays it all out there on the ground, each piece, each tiny detail laid out in the light. In the next minute or two, slow down. Imagine all the pieces of your life, all jumbled, dusty, and maybe covered in cobwebs. Imagine them being cleaned by him, refreshed, laid out in the light. If it helps, Begin by repeating a few times in your mind something like, Jesus, restore my soul. Please, Jesus, restore my soul. Take the next minute to be quiet before him. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. He restores my soul. Psalm 23, 1 and 3. It is time now to reflect on God's goodness, the work he's doing to restore your soul. Now, there's a lot in these two words, restore and soul. To restore means to give back, to build up again, to establish again, to return to. It is about rebuilding, repairing, renewing. The great carpenter is doing a work, constantly giving back your soul, repairing it, restoring it, and establishing it again. 
He who began this good work in you will continue to perfect it until the day he returns. See, the Creator formed humanity out of the mud with his own hands, and continues to do so. He is not an artist content to leave the project undone. So what does that mean, that my soul is being restored? Well, when you think of the word soul, many things may come to mind. But the poet that first wrote these words chooses the Hebrew word nefesh. See, your nefesh is your life, your self, your personhood. This means your desires, your passions, your emotions, your entirety. The great handworker is doing a work to rebuild you and renew you in your entirety. Your body, your mind, your emotions, your relationships, your beliefs, your behavior, all of it. Spend some time in quiet, thinking through all the work he has already done to restore you. What restoration projects has God already completed in you? What parts of your life already show the Restorer's fingerprints? Thank Him for it. Then think through the projects that are currently in process. In what ways is He restoring you now? What parts of your personhood are being rebuilt? What desires are being straightened out and established again? What repair work is he doing on previous scars? Thank the great carpenter for his creative work in you. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. He restores my soul. Psalm 23, 1 and 3. Let's return to the pieces of the wooden chest, all separated, organized, and laid out in the light. The cobwebs are cleared. The dust is cleaned. The lights are on. And now you can see things as they are. It's time to take an inventory of the reality of your soul, your personhood, your passions, your beliefs, your behaviors. Consider these four realities as you stand beside the great carpenter, looking at the pieces laid out in the light. Where is there mold or rot? These are the parts of life where I am stagnant or have unhealthy habits, where some part of me is being eaten away, some belief or behavior that cannot hold the weight of life anymore. This is where I'm going my own way instead of God's, and it needs to be cut out and replaced by Him. Where are there cracks or broken pieces? These are the parts of my life where I carry unresolved pain. What hurts am I carrying that I need to be honest about and offer forgiveness or seek resolution? Where do I need to remember that God loves me and he has forgiven me? This is where God does his healing work and it needs to be mended. Where is the paint peeling? These are the parts of my life where I'm wearing artificial masks or other identities on the surface to keep myself safe or to gain acceptance or to hide myself. 
These stand in the way of honesty and who God actually made me to be, and they need to be sanded down. And where is the wood simply worn and in need of refreshment? These are healthy things in my life that just need renewed attention in order to shine. This is where God wants to work alongside you to buff out minor scrapes and add some varnish. In quiet, reflect on these, remembering that the great carpenter wants to restore you because he loves you. Please, Jesus, restore my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. He restores my soul. Psalm 23, 1 and 3. Right before Jesus enters Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, he walks past two blind men along the road. When they cry out for mercy, for help, Jesus stops everything. He looks at them, and he says to them, What do you want me to do for you? He says the same thing to you now. Now that you have named reality, have laid out the pieces of your life, and reflected on where you need help, the great carpenter looks and asks, What do you want me to do for you? What would it look like for you to be restored today? See, God specializes in bringing good out of bad, order out of chaos, beauty out of boredom, life out of death. This is the Jesus of redemption, of restoration, of resurrection. See, this is not about looking better, a new coat of paint. It is about returning back to the carpenter's intended purpose for you, being made useful again, being made beautiful again. Jesus asks you now, what do you want me to do for you? Answer him. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring my soul. Thank you for being the one to restore me to health and heal my wounds. May you yourself restore me and make me strong, firm, and steadfast. As you said through the prophet Amos, may you rebuild the ruined cities so we may live in them. May the restoration of my soul be a billboard to the world of the work you are doing to make all things new. In the name of Jesus, amen.